Hi there, I'm Adam Kirwas and this is my novel. Listen, I was struck. What else is there? What else can you say? All my life, all what I believed in, even the good memories, all in vain. The breath, this was my name now. I was utterly mistaken. And despite the fact that I have accomplished so much, at least I think I did, these words, they struck me. This memory, which I have, which I have kept so many years, and which gave me so much comfort, at least in my youth, I knew someone who was fond of me. But in the end, it all seems a sham. As if I would have been diseased. This salesman who is very confident, who made a name of himself, was nothing but a fool. Someone who has been deceived all his life. And what comes next? What is happening for him, with me? More and more, I feel that I'm mis place that nothing in my life ever made sense and it was and it is understandable that I'm there where I am now totally lost stranded not knowing where to go and I think of Claire and my children with deep bitterness I ruined it I destroyed it the only good thing in my life was the present not the past not the dark, murky past, which, as it turns out, is just nothing but a sham. All destroyed. I destroyed the last good thing in my life. I ruined it all. And the fall alone, the fall alone ruins me. What next? Can I go back to Claire? But this man, apparently this shopkeeper, he saved me from something saved me and even though i don't want to think about it i want to forget it about leave it all behind what do i care what is over and over but somehow i feel hatred somehow i feel revenge revenge something is brewing inside me they did this to me they did this to me at least i want to see them at least i want to look them in the eyes these people these evil people these despicable people. I want to see them. And maybe I should thank this man, this shop keeper. In my despair, I would be glad to meet anyone, anyone whom I think would help me to make sense, but anyone as well as who, with whom I have a special bond for the sake of good memories or to find a way out of this maze to find my way back can I go back to Claire Mrs. Gladys has finally stopped talking all her words every syllable of it pierced my soul every word of it I still have the taste of chocolate in my mouth, these sweet memories I ate last night in reminiscence of what I had experienced in my childhood. But then this, but then this, now everything turned bitter, sour, unsavory, and it has all intermingled with these memories. All a sham. I ask Mrs. Gladys, Gladys, about the old mount, about this shopkeeper, and I notice my voice is shaking. My voice has lost his its confidence. For a matter of fact, I have lost my confidence. I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know what, what, what to make of it. She gives me the address somewhere there. 
somewhere there out there in this place I look at Mrs. Gladys I look at her deeply this woman this face and what all happened to it and how it all came to an end who is Peter I ask myself the one whose life is apparently more worth than mine who is he I don't know, but I know one thing that I need to get out of there. I need to breathe. I need to be about, around other people. I need to make sense about this all. I try to remember, try to fathom good memories in my life because they are very imp- important. Those memories, they make my Personality, they are all about me, but they are hard to fathom. Almost, I had nothing in my life. No, for a matter of fact, I had it all. Claire, the children, but I left them, I abandoned them. I look into the distance, I look at the road, I look at my car, I drove so far drove somewhere, somewhere where I tried to make sense, somewhere where I thought I would find some soothing remedy, remedy for what is aiding me. But more and more I realize nothing can help me. Here in this, in this place, in this dark place where I have been deceived all these years, where I was a fool, Well, I didn't even know what really happened. How, that's how oblivious I was. A blind guy, a stupid guy, who then, out of a whim, sacrificed everything he had. I feel so stupid. I feel so dumb. What am I doing here? This is what I ask myself over and over again. But in my despair, I can somehow wrap myself up, up. This man, this shopkeeper old man, he deserves a thank you. He apparently saved me. And I still cannot believe all this year that I have forgotten it. I still feel the pain under my feet. I still feel the cold, the memory, the memory of the past more and more permeates all parts of my brain. It pierces my body. I feel it vividly on my skin. I see the world from the perspective of a child again. I feel myself back there again in my despair, in my hopelessness. I cannot stop it. I cannot escape it. These people, they can do with me whatever they want. I'm lost. My life was so wasted. And then someone saved me. And then everything gets dark, dark again. Submerges in, into darkness. What happened next? I try to force my memory. What happened next? Somehow this probably didn't go well. This sadistic teacher, this malignant teacher probably didn't take it well that she was tried publicly. Or did she? Did it stop thereafter? I don't know. Darkness. I look into the darkness. That's all I got. That's all what these memories are. More and more I feel that my life, that the past is nothing but a black hole. A black hole that draws me in. A black hole that is about to 
devour the last bit of human humanity in me. I feel some sort of a quavering, a tittering in my voice, in my gait. For moments I'm lost. For moments I don't know where to go. Where's my place? What's next? I get in the car. I remember the last thought I had. This man needs an apology. I, this man needs a thank you. This is what I owe to him. He apparently saved my life. Even though I don't know what came next. Even though my memories betray me. I drive to the address Mrs. Gladys gave me. I get out. I, I have to insure myself twice. The address I've written down on my mobile phone notepad. It is correct. It is an old Delapé. Take it home. No one seems to be living there anymore. What does an old woman know? Maybe all her memories. Maybe she mixed it up. Maybe this brat she talked about who avoided and escaped. Maybe it was meant for someone else. For moments I feel relieved. For moments maybe there's a way back. Maybe it wasn't bad at all. Maybe this brat, this guy, this boy was someone else. Someone else. Maybe it wasn't me. But then I remember I'm the one whose life is derailing. I'm the one who loses consciousness. I'm the one who cannot move properly, whose entire body stalls and staunches, who is incapable of arraying his mind and his life. I'm the one who is going through hell. And, I, and I'm the one who threw it away all at once. Could it be that I'm the brat? Could it be that she indeed talked about me? These thoughts are saddened. These thoughts are saddening. A young boy, that's what I was. And I was already called a brat. And I was already thought of someone whose life is not worth anything whose life is apparently easy to be sacrificed, can be sacrificed, gotten rid of. What is this? And I think about what would happen if I would die at once? What would happen if I would lose my life at once? I don't have anyone to cling on to anymore. I don't have anyone who could talk on my behalf, for whom I am the center of the world. More and more I realize I'm nobody, just a random guy who could not manage his life. One of those bums I looked down upon in the past, who, who will never, ever do anything right in their lives. That's me now. That's my life now. And apparently it was always predestined. I was predestined to end like here. For a moment, I cannot help myself. What's next? I stand in the in front of this old dilapidated house. This home, that's my life now. And what of it? What of it? I look at it desperately, hopelessly. I look around. There are some neighbors. A neighbor is outside. I don't know whether I should bother to ask him. Maybe it's better just to believe. Believe a lie. Believe anything. Anything that could just save me. Who cares? Let's go back and eat and take 
drugs to sedate my mind. I could make it work. I could make it work with Claire. I could deceive myself. What do I care about the past? More and more I realize that these memories, they are painful. Despite the fact that a part of me wants to find out what's behind this dark curtain. What's in this darkness. But uh, another part thinks uh, and even seems to know that things could even get worse. Maybe this is a turning point in my life right here at this very moment here. I could wrap it up, pack my stuff and go back, assume my life, reassume it, just forget about it. Maybe it would all be possible. This is one of those moments. This is one of those moments in your life which you came to and think, think lost on a crossroad as well as lost in thought. I eye the neighbor who is outside mowing his lawn. I take a deep breath. I inhale deeply. I feel the air in, in, in my body, in all parts of it. And then I tread I feel my feet and I'm, I feel the strength, I move forward. I approach the neighbor, a grumpy old man, a retiree as it seems. And I ask him about the shopkeeper, old man. Does he know him? He's dead, he tells me. So after all, this is his home. I'm disappointed. I may be this bread. His daddy tells me, but he has a daughter. She lives in a city. And she's a shop assistant in a boutique. He tells me, a daughter. Mrs. I remember Mrs. Gladys talked about a daughter. She talked about Clarence. Mr. Oldwood Clarence, who thought that he would be better than all, but he didn't know what his daughter did. He didn't know what she did. Do I want to know what she did? I asked myself. However, I came so far. I came so far to ask about Oldman. I came. I went so far to verify whether this old Delapier did it home. Is indeed his his place, and apparently it is. So why bother? After after all these efforts, I take down the note of the boutique. The grumpy old man he doesn't know where she lives exactly. Only in his city, he hasn't seen her for a while, and he he doesn't care. He tells me he doesn't care about anyone, and he resumes his work mowing his lawn all by himself I'm thoughtful do I care shouldn't I emulate this man's attitude towards the world just don't care don't care at all look at the I look at my mobile phone where I've written down the address of the bo- boutique, the name of the boutique. I look it up on Google Maps. I can go there, it is open. It's a fashion shop, a boutique. I could go in there, pretend to be a cas Tema. Maybe she's working today. But, but what are the odds? Even the thought of it is exhausting. And even though if I would meet her, firstly, do I know how she looks like? Would I immediately recognize her? 
And secondly, I don't feel the strength anymore. What if I come across a second disappointment? What if there is more, more and more something inside wants to hold back this memory? Something which tries to ensure that I survive mentally. Something inside me, some mechanism more and more I realize which wants to keep me alive. What would I this? cover what would I see whom would I meet but there is no turning back now anymore let's get it over with I tell myself let's meet her and then we'll see curiosity gets the better of me I get in my car I drive to the boutique it is one of those small boutiques you somehow wonder that they could survive the onslaught of of those big big fashion change and as well as of those internet and online shops. However, it seems to be on the verge. Not many customers I assume. I get inside, I look around. No shop assistant there. Maybe she doesn't even call herself Old Mound anymore. A thought strikes me. Maybe she's married. Maybe she's happy. Maybe she has it all. I look around in the boutique. Look around and all this stuff. Just wear new clothes. Just start a new chapter in my life. Wouldn't it be my wish? Leave it all behind. Believe a lie. I see at the cook at all these clothes. I see it all. Posse, Billy, at this. I think about my past. Back when I was this successful salesman, this real estate man where I could really sell good things where I could convince people about what they need and I fancied myself with good clothes and I liked wearing suits I liked them because they firstly gave you something professional and secondly they gave you strength I saw suits as the culmination of my life progress of my elevation I gradually ascended in my life like the chairs I climbed and my life had reached a point where I was proud of myself proud of it all but now suits and all what they stood for they have lost all their appeal now the office is empty. Now if I would wear a suit. Now if I would assume my old job in this real estate agent. When I would beg for them probably you would have to beg for it. It would be different and I know it well. It would be void. It would be empty. I would not be satisfied. I would carry around an empty suit, a person who has no faith, a, a person who doesn't even know his past, who knows, who doesn't know anything, who is who is so lost, who has been devoid of all memories. More and more, I think to myself, what am I doing here? This is one thought, but the second thought is, do you have any? other place to go do you have somewhere to go after all these years on this planet and now and after all the efforts I spent spent to accomplish something spent to move ahead in my life after all these years 
I ended up with nothing. I ended up somewhere, somewhere where I struggle, struggle with myself. I have nothing, nothing to call my home, no place to go back as if my footprint on this earth would be slowly and gradually disappearing. And all what I believed in about me, what I thought is me, disappears with it. In the corner, I see a shop assistant. She's thoughtful. She seems melancholic, melancholic, but somehow one sees that she has a beauty, a beauty that is and needs to be unearthed underneath of layers of life. That's what life does to you. It robs you of all happiness, I say to myself. But I still one can fathom her beauty. And she looks plainly out of the window, out of the people outside who pass the boutique, probably heading somewhere. Is this bitterness about a business that is not thriving? Or is this just about life? Bitterness about life that one is trapped inside this these walls that one cannot move out, that one cannot find this place, this goal where everyone seems to be heading. This goal, what seems to be only momentary. People who live from moment to moment, who pursue these small fancies and who are therefore not forced to see the overall picture. Who can fancy themselves with small, satisfactory accomplishments? Like I did. I thought I had it all. I wish I could go back there again. Somehow I feel a closeness to this woman. Despite the fact that I've never met her. Maybe she is his daughter. Maybe she is the daughter of Old Mount. Maybe they belong to her. I cannot even recall his face. I have no memory about him whatsoever. I don't know anything about this man. Only a name, Clarence Old Mount. And he probably spoke on my behalf. He said enough to a sadistic teacher. And what of it? Now I'm here in a stupid boutique. Try to cling on something. On something I hoped would be me, my own identity. And now I'm here. Track down his daughter to say what exactly. What of it? Thank you. Then turn around and leave. I feel so stupid again. So dumb. Probably this is this happens if you do not go to college. If you do not find the words, whatever. Maybe I just could have sent her a present. Or anything else. Maybe a guy who went to college, he would know a word. He would know his words. The necessary thing one needs to say. Not only to old man's daughter, but as well as in life. I've never learned to express myself. This is one of those big tragedies in my life. Back in the days I looked down on people who went to college and think they have, they have it all. But what do they learn in college? Probably to express themselves. I can express myself as well, I think to myself. But then it dawns on me, no, everything I do, whenever I speak, 
Whatever I say, it is all about selling myself. It is all about selling a product. And I realize this is different. If you talk with others just to sell a product, if you talk with others just to ensure a goal, then the entire conversation seems to be stilted, seems not real, isn't authentic just for one purpose. You want to get a sale pitch and that's all. It's not about you. It's not about you personally. It's just void. I approach the woman. She looks up. She doesn't lose her melancholic facial expression. I cannot smile at her. I don't feel like joy. She just says hi, hi in a feeble voice. I respond hi back. As if two sad people met. And now they are trying to, to find the words. I, I feel uncomfortable for the first time in my life. Normally I would always go in there. Normally I can talk to every girl. That's how I met Claire. I didn't held back. I was never known as the shy guy. No, I could talk with people straight away. This is what I had trained on very early on. You have to cut down the barrier between you and the people. If you hammer and hide in front of people, then you build a wall between you and them. And the most essential thing is, if you talk to other people, then you prevent this wall from being built between you and them. This is very, very important. This is the first thing if you want to sell a product. That the person you sell a product to, that the person you want to gain for you, does not hide behind a wall and cannot hide behind, hide behind a wall. That you can immediately create a bond between you and them. This is essential. And that's, and that's what I realized very early on. You have to talk straight, straight out of it, and directly to the people. You have to call them. You have to look them in the eyes. You have to be close to them. But if you stand in front of them, hesitant, tend thoughtful, they will first look at you as a weirdo and secondly, they will step back. This means a setback. A setback for you as a sales person. People then will be cautious. They will start to doubt everything you say. They, they will even think that you are a sleazy sales person who want to sell them crap. Therefore, always prevent the barrier to be built. But at this very moment, I don't know what to do with myself. I myself ah, am melancholic. I myself don't know what to do. And more and more, after I've experienced and after I feel this inevitability in my life, this end, my end, seems to be inevitable. I cannot help myself. I cannot find the words around this, what is ailing me. I don't feel the strength anymore to sell anything because a sale is always about you. You have to sell yourself to the customer. This is what people forget. Not the product is important initially. If you want to build a bond with your customer, the first two or three minutes of your conversation with the customer is actually about you. You make an impression on the customer. 
even though you you do not talk about yourself your actions talk about you if you're a well prepared salesman if you know what to say if you can astonish your opponent with knowledge with anything then your customer will think of you first and firstly uh, as a diligent person someone who is well prepared someone who has probably a, a structured life someone's life who is not a mess who doesn't live in chaos someone who probably has studied if you know your words or pretend that you know a lot of words use an eloquent language then the cuss them f- will think that you are educated that you went to college that you're a smart guy and if you talk about human values about the needs of people about homeliness then your cuss them will think that you are down to earth that you have principles that you know what really matters and these are all the messages you at first convey to the person you want to sell sell something at so the first part of your sales pitch is is all about you you first to sell yourself to the cuss tema you make yourself known that you are a diligent person that you are a trustworthy person that you have principles that you are edu kitted that you know that you're not a sleazy guy who just want to get rid of a product or just deceive someone these are all very important rules to sell something and it is very important not to just stand in front of a cuss tema searching for words not knowing what to say as if you wouldn't be sure should you go so far to deceive this person or not but i'm lost in this boutique i'm lost for good i struggle for words and i see after a while she asks me can i help you did she realize did she notice that i'm lost i try to regain my composure yeah i think i need something fancy for a new chapter in my life she doesn't smile she's she just nods as if she would know that these things would be necessary i try to be smart with an effort i try to say something funny and lost myself halfway through try to emulate my past me try to come back but i failed somehow she just nodded i think we have something for you she tells me gets up and shows me some suits we are back there again i look at her as if she would be living in a in a different world somehow i'm fascinated by her this woman she's the bond between her f- between me and the, and my memories they the only thing i can cling to the only thing that is left in my life the only thing that is real to me seems to be real for me and she stands in f- front of me trying to find clothes for me to disguise the person i am to disguise the void i feel the nothingness the darkness 
all these erased memories. And I haven't figured out how I could have forgotten it all, that nothing was left of it. Well, I say some sort of trying to gain my confidence, maybe something which I can pick up some grass. I try to be confident, this man who has a plan after all. Someone who wasn't burned by life. She smiles for the first time, a faint smile. Yeah, there are enough women here. You can meet. She looks at me in her face and in her eyes there is no shyness or something. She looks me straight in the eyes and her gaze pierces my is piercing. Are you new in town? Yeah, I tell her trying to sound confident. I'm shopping around checking out, you know, what's in here for me. She's thoughtful for a while. She does not immediately respond. There's a lot here, a lot in you for you. This city has a lot to offer. No, she does not say things like that. And I more and more perceive the deep melancholy which has perviated this room which has permeated and her uh, after a while well you will find probably something she tells me I try to respond uh, maybe I will find confidence in the future S- something that could fancy something to fancy myself with Maybe you should buy an expensive car, she tells me. That's what men do. An expensive car? Yeah. I've never heard about it. How does it work? Well, I don't know the details, she tells me. But normally you just buy an expensive car. And then... And what then? And then things happened happen on their own oh you mean I see you mean a a pussy magnet yeah something like that well you well you tell me you don't know anything about it but yet you you give me this advice did you fall prey to one of these magnets Maybe, she tells me, and she smiles. Her smile is challenging. Maybe I should do it. But then I wouldn't need a a new suit, would I? I guess not. Well, that's not smart of you, is it? Since you should pitch me a sale. Since you should tell me that the best thing to, to get a girl is to wear a great suit, shouldn't you? Well, maybe maybe I should. Why you just tell me that I'm awesome as I am? No, I cannot do that. She responds. Why? I want to be honest. Well, that's, that's cruel, isn't it? It's the truth. I bet it is. I can utter only. I bet it is. And I wonder how am I, how am I appearing to the people around me? What the last couple of months and weeks did to me. I once heard someone say, well, maybe I, I read about it in all those news magazines about how to picture say that 
that the happiness and the joy that you feel in yourself and the confidence you feel in yourself that it inadvertently and purposefully that this confidence in inadvertently will will appear in your face as well that it is a byproduct of the belief in yourself so that you do not have to force yourself to smile to elate this confidence but that it will appear on your face that it will that it will profuse through all your body that you would that you will exude this confidence and convey this confidence this this joy in your life to all the people who are, who surround you that this is that this all comes with success that's why success is is contagious in that sense success has an effect on all the people around you it makes the difference but i've lost all this self confidence i've lost not only my mojo i've lost my entire life somehow i i'm so surprised that i can talk carelessly maybe a remnant above me of my past you had to be fast as a sales person talk about what people want fast with the talk it is saddening i say to myself saddening well you are cruel aren't you i continue i continue well some people think that way the truth hurts well i wish i wish you would lie to me i wish you would tell me that i am good looking no so it's no use asking you whether you can me you can make me look like Brad Pitt no i cannot do this maybe you should go into into a different kind of tweak where people lie to me yeah well i'm considering it that's so sad is it yes well maybe i just need something to cheer me up only the truth can cheer you up and now you are now you are exaggerating don't you no this is not exaggeration this is a fact a fact about what a fact about life she tells me but what life would that be an authentic life is her keen response i see you do yes i see that your authentic life puts on a smile on your face my sweet little sunshine these words struck her not just the mood today i ask her yeah i'm not myself i'm not quite myself she responds i bet i tell her when i the moment i came in I actually was scared of you. You were? Yes. I thought of thought of you as a weirdo. I'm no weirdo. Now she smiles. I have offended her. I've challenged her. Challenged her to get out of her. And I have in a way insulted her. This is how you can poke people. How you can wake them up. Now she smiles more. She tries to prove me wrong. She's after all this 
blissful woman whose life choices, this so-called authentic life, has a meaning after all. I got her where I want, want her again. My mind is filled with the thoughts of sales person, of a sales person, as I think like someone who wants to sell something, but what I'm not sure. Now it looks better, I tell her. See what a what a beautiful woman you are. You shouldn't hide your beauty behind this melancholic layer. Well, she tells me. She she tells me coyly. Well, my boyfriend likes this side of me. What your melancholic side side he likes it, yeah. Or your authentic side, that one too. Of course I immediately fathom that she has no boyfriend. This is something you immediately immediately realize. Women always talk about having a, a boyfriend. It is always about challenging challenging other men, about juxtaposing men against each other, pinning them against each other and seeing what will happen. This is how women assert power over man and they enjoy when another man fights for her attention, when a man fights for her attention with another man, even though this other man is a fake. I know these games very well. I've talked to a lot of women, but I play along, I pretend to be I pretend that I would believe her because I want to take revenge on her. I want to make her believe that she could have had me. She could have haven't, have gotten me. That I am a good fella. A good fella every woman wants to be with. But after she told me this was a mistake, that she has a boyfriend, I, I as an honorable man, and I as a knight, a chivalrous knight, I would never ever take away the wife of someone else, the girl of someone else. This is how you turn around this game, this game of power. Well, I tell her. So, you live down here. You are asking a lot of questions, she tells me. I'm, I'm trying to get an out the people in this town. I, I tell her, I'm new here. Remember, this is what you do when you are somewhere new. Ask people how they are doing, what and where they are living. Now that's weird. That's really weird. Well, maybe I'm a serial killer. I tell her. She just loves the word, the word serial killer. Made her love. Well, you sure as hell look like one. You, you think so? Yeah. And this from a woman who looks like a grufty. I'm not grufty. She is offended again, but she smiles. She, she's been challenged. She, she's not challenged very often. And I assume that she does not talk with other people very often. I more and more realize that she enjoys the conversation. This is again something I realized whenever I sell products. There are some customers, especially retirees, who have no one to talk to and who enjoy a nice conversation, who don't want to hear about a product or whatever, but who just want to talk with someone, who just have someone to talk about their lives. 
but I see she she is reticent. I immediately realize she is reticent. She doesn't want to openly talk about herself, having no one to talk to. Because she lied, didn't she? She told me that she has a boyfriend, even though I know that this is not true. But yet she has to go along with it. Have to eat her, her words. Well, I tell her, at least someone, someone hangs out with you. Your boyfriend probably isn't afraid of your fierce gaze. What? Now this was a little bit too much. I realize I have challenged her too much. I have no fierce ge- fear gaze. You are, the, you are the first one who told me that he's scared of me. Scared of women. She tells me. She looks at me severely. Challenging. You are a very fearful man, aren't you? She tells me. I'm sentimental. I tell her with a smile. And I'm fragile. You know, she looks at me. She tries to su- suppress her smile. These words, sentimental and fragile, they do not suit a man who is tall, who is muscular, and who is self confident. These words, they contradict my appearance and a smile added on to them is challenging for her and I need a suit which undermines me which underlines my ambition your ambition yeah I retort yeah I have a lot of um, ambition in this new town. I want to make the change. A change? What change? Get to know as many women as possible. I smile at her. I grin at her broadly. Ah, Men are all the same, aren't they? She responds. They probably are. I tell her they probably are. She goes back to her work, back to sorting out the sorting out the suits. I approach her cautiously. I feel again this pain in my feet, this coldness in my feet. I again feel stupid lost then I stand next to her my initial confidence is gone I look at her while she tries to find the right suit for me then it blurs out of me I knew your father and she stops she stops at once And she looks at me and I see that in her eyes tears gather. She looks at me painfully, lost, hopelessly. Memories of her father and I wonder how he was like. I never met him. I don't remember having ever met him. She, his daughter, 